Welcome back. I wanted to take a few minutes right now and uh, introduce a topic that we'll be talking about quite a bit uh, throughout this course, and that is linear approximation. So we now have the language I think we need uh, to frame this problem completely, although a lot of it's quite intuitive, so it's not that we require this um, theoretical framework that we've built up but it certainly helps to be able to fit it all together. So uh, we're going to assume that we have an ortho basis I don't know, uh, for a Hilbert space. I don't know what's going on with uh, this writing. It looks like I have some sort of a palsy. Um, but we'll just keep moving and trust that it's legible. Um, honest, my fingers aren't shaking as I write this. I'm not quite sure why this is working um, the way it is. Spanned by We're going to be a very specific example here. The first nine uh, basis functions. Okay, so given x in S, x hat is going to be defined as pt of x, which would just be the projection onto this subspace 0 to 9, x comma vk. I think I figured out what the problem is. The tip on my stylus wasn't seated all the way. Okay. Yeah, now it seems to be working better. How good is our approximation? That's the question. So we have the language we need to discuss this. We've already talked about Parseval's theorem. And we have a Hilbert space S. And so this S here um, essentially is relating, saying that uh, our Hilbert space, which must have uh, an inner product to be a Hilbert space, has an associated induced norm. We don't know what it is because I haven't given you the inner product and wonderfully it doesn't really matter but this is just noting formally that we are indeed using the norm induced by the inner product on Hilbert space S. Okay so if we write it like this X um, can be written in terms of its um, of the ortho basis, and x hat can be written in terms of the ortho basis for e k. Like such. And sometimes you do really tricky math. Today is not one of those days. Uh, it now looks like this. The 
Well, because we have an ortho basis, this is just equal to So where did that come from? Uh, that's essentially from Parseval's theorem. So what is it telling us? Um, and this is since I guess let me finish writing and then I'll suggest you what it's telling us. So um, now the, uh, the whole matter is if the first 10 terms, 0 through 9, the ones that we chose, so x comma vk's, if you will, are much larger. than the others, the relative error is small. So we'll um, find out soon uh, because uh, next week we'll be talking about uh, a little bit about the DC, er, um, JPEG image compression. That's the basic idea. We choose for JPEG, we choose a basis um, set so that the first uh, basis vectors in our list tend to be the ones that are most useful in uh, modeling our signal. And in fact, we have some formal ways to do this, but it turns out that uh, we end up compromising with JPEG and choosing not the ones that kind of maximize uh, x comma vk, the inner product, for small values of k, but for ones that approximate that and that are easily computable. That's the idea behind JPEG. So if you transform it and then you only save the uh, x comma vk's that are large and get rid of the other ones, then the total error is going to be just the sum of the squared error or squared values of the ones that you got rid of. Uh, and in this case, um, uh, in the case of JPEG, that ends up to be quite small. Thank you much.